So sometimes when I post videos on the games that I'm working on, Wizard Ox and the Lost Hat, I get asked questions about how things inside it work. And there was one recently that I thought I'd answer because it's actually fairly simple. You might have seen an effect like this in other games. I more or less stole the idea from uh, like Pokemon Diamond, Pearl, Platinum, Brilliant Diamond, Shining Pearl, those games. And you can do this in both 2D and 3D games. And although the way that you would do it in either case is slightly different from each other, it's, uh, it's pretty simple in either case. Hello all the crazy people out there, my name is Michael, I like wizards and dragons and making games, and let's talk about these cloud shadows on the ground. Alright. So we're gonna start with projecting cloud shadows down on the ground in 2D because it's slightly easier. So, um, this is, um, I'm going to start with my little base 2D project here. Uh, this is, uh, you know, I use this in a lot of my demos, 2D, uh, 2D game world, depth equals negative y, all that fun stuff. I have gone ahead and added a sprite, which is a 100 by 100 of uh, basically a repeating cloud tile image. I'm not going to get into how you can generate a random tiling cloud image like this today. Uh, maybe another day, but that's um, for this video, we're just going to use the ones that I pre-generated ahead of time. Uh, you don't have to do any setup for it. You don't have to do any like weird texture settings or separate texture pages or anything like that to make this work in 2D. So all I need to do here is after the rest of the scene has been drawn in every frame. I need to go and draw a tiling cloud, like the, the tiling cloud sprite to tile the screen. And if you have like a camera object, you might want to do this there. In my case, I don't really have a camera object in this uh, in the super basic project, so I'm, I'm probably just going to go into uh, the character object and do this here. So in the end of the draw event, we can say, uh, or maybe if we want to be a little more correct about things, we can say in the draw end event, uh, which is basically begin and end step for, for drawing. Uh, we can say draw sprite tiled. Uh, the sprite can be spr underscore clouds. The sub image can be zero. Uh, X can be zero and Y can be zero. So it's going to tile the screen and it's going to start at zero, zero in the room. Uh, if I were to run the game now, uh, we would have clouds covering the screen. Uh, this is not exactly really what we um what we're looking for. I guess this can be what you're looking for if you want like a fog effect, but I have a feeling that the person who was asking about this was more interested in the like the shadow aspect of um of drawing these clouds. So instead we can say draw sprite tiled extended. And uh, like many of these sprite and other thing drawing functions in Game Maker, there's an extended version of it of draw sprite tiled, which you can use to um uh, for example set the uh, the scale. I'm not going to do anything pointed to the scale, we can set that to one one. Uh, the color can be C underscore white. The alpha, let's make the 0 0.5. Actually, what am I talking about? The color can be C underscore black. And this is going to draw a 50% uh, transparent, um, like, black shadow. Uh, black cloud shadows over the entire world. Uh, we can further mess with this if we'd like. Uh, if we like, we can give this a bit of a scale. Uh, say, set that to 3, 3. Uh, we can bump down the alpha further because that's actually a little bit... Um, Still a little bit darker than I thought it was going to be. Um, you can turn on GPU set text filter, uh, set that to true while we're drawing the clouds. Uh, if you'd like to, um, if you'd like to make the edges a little bit softer, and that is going to that's going to soften the edges of the cloud a little bit. That'll make the edges a little bit blurrier. Um, right now, these are not scrolling in uh, in Wizard X and the Lost Hat. The cloud um, the cloud shadows will scroll on the view, so. Uh, to do that, we can say instead of drawing them relative to zero, zero in the room, we can use some kind of a time variable. Uh, there's a couple ways to do this. I'm personally a fan of the current time uh, built-in variable in Game Maker. Uh, this is a value which will keep track of the number of milliseconds since the game has started. If you want the number of, for example, seconds since the game has started, you can divide that by a thousand. Uh, we can save our t equals that. Uh, this is going to... Um, Let's see, t is the number of seconds since the game has started. I think that's going to scroll a little bit slow if I just make it scroll by that amount. So let's say um, that value times 10, and then we can draw the um, the clouds relative to like um, t0, the time value, and then they will scroll based on time like this. All right, that's actually a pretty decent rate. You can have them scroll up, down, forwards, backwards, uh, whichever direction you want. And that is... um. That is these that is these cloud shadows in um in 2D. Uh, you can further mess with this. You can use like a proper blur shader blur effect on these if you like, uh, rather than just using uh, texture filtering to um to blur them out slightly. Um, you can leave the blending color as C underscore white. 
if you'd like, you can play around with the alpha uh, if you'd like, and then you're going to get something that looks, again, maybe a little bit more like, um, I don't know, fog effects. Uh, 0.125, 1.8 might actually be a little bit too light uh, for something like this. All right, so now we're, uh, we're like ducking in and out of fog. And, um, hmm, there seems to be some kind of uh, alpha blending uh, annoying nonsense going around on the, um, the edges of the, like, the interpolated textures. Anyway, if you want to get really fancy, you can play around with, um, like, blend modes or fancy, like, distortion shaders or that kind of thing uh, with this, uh, with this cloud overlay. I'm not going to get too far into it. I just wanted to do a simple example for a 2D. Uh, let's see. Let's go add, um, add a commit like that. So in the world of 3D, this gets a little bit more interesting. So I'm going to be using this uh, big semi-open, like big, big tree, big terrain example, because I was going to originally use the uh, the diorama camera example for this, but uh, I decided that it, it would look better if everything in the game wasn't like a, a sprite and if there was actually like 3D geometry that you could see the clouds projected on. So we're going to do that instead. Uh, we're going to use this one instead. Here we actually are going to use shaders and some... Uh, some uh, some more involved code like that. I am actually going to go into the cloud sprite uh, texture settings and hit separate texture page here uh, because we are going to be making use of texture samplers. So um, in this example, I'm going to go into the regular draw event of the object that is drawing all of the like all of the 3D stuff. So there is a camera object in this example. Uh, presumably you and your own game have some kind of object that sets up the shaders or um, 3D projections or that kind of thing in your 3D game and game maker, and I would recommend that you go there. So um, let's see the uh, the shader that's actually going to be doing most of this is going to be SHD underscore forward, uh, because apparently I was at some point thinking of using like this for a deferred rendering example. Let's see. So after we set the shader, we're going to want to set up a few uniforms, but first let's actually set up what those are going to do inside the shader. So first, let's go set up a few uniforms. Firstly, let's say uniform um, sampler2d. Uh, let's say samp underscore clouds. Uh, that's going to be the, uh, the texture sampler, which contains the cloud sprites. Pretty self-explanatory. I can also say uniform uh, vec2 u cloud size. Uh, this is going to be a uniform containing the size of the cloud sprites, because we'll need to, we'll need to adjust some, some coordinates by that later on. Uh, let's see, thirdly, uniform vec2 u underscore cloud time. This is going to be a value which controls the scrolling of the clouds on the ground. All right, I think I'll start with that. Uh, there's a few other parameters you can punch in as uniforms if you'd like. I, I might give those a shout at the end of the video. Uh, but let's, uh, let's start with the basics first. I'm also going to need a varying which uh, contains the world position of every fragment being drawn here in the fragment shader. I've already got this in this project for the... Um, uh, for lighting, because this is something you often need in lighting calculations. Uh, so this is calculated in the vertex shader. You set up a varying v underscore v world position, and you can just assign it the expression of basically a similar transformation like you would use for gl underscore position, but instead of multiplying by the worldview and projection matrices uh, with the um, the input vertex position, you would just multiply by the world matrix, turn it into 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 view sp into world space. And um, again, if you've done lighting in 3D, which if you're watching this video, you almost certainly have, you've probably done this before. Let's see. So if I scroll down to the bottom, uh, let's say I'm going to want to sample from, I'm going to want to start by sampling from a point on the cloud texture. So we can say uh, texture 2D of stamp underscore clouds and some value. I'm not going to be doing any complicated weird shadow mapping or anything like that for this. I probably should have said that at the beginning of the video if I if I didn't. I don't think I did. Um, all we're really going to be doing here is projecting the cloud texture downwards onto whatever's below it. Uh, we're not going to be doing any complicated like actual cloud simulations or anything like that. There are some people who like doing that, but for a simple effect like this, I don't really think it's necessary. So I'm going to use the uh, the world position as the input into this texture 2D function, but not directly because the uh, the world position is in like world space units and uh, texture 2D expects an input that's in like tex texture space units. And if you were to just directly feed uh, world position dot X, Y into that, then you'd have like a full repetition of the cloud sprite for every individual world space unit, which would be a bit much. So um, if I say vec2 cloud UVs, 
I can take the world the world position and, um, for example, divide that by u underscore cloud size, um, and that's going to at least um, that's going to at least set it so that every uh, texel on the cloud the cloud sprite texture is going to be, at least correspond to one unit in world space, which would look a little better. Uh, you can further uh, mess with the scaling by multiplying this by some kind of scale factor. I'm not going to do that right now. Uh, let's take the cloud UVs, uh, shove that into the texture 2D function. Uh, yes, I, I am aware that you can instead multiply by like the reciprocal cloud size, calculate that before you set it as a uniform and it'll be slightly more efficient. Um, I am not going to lose sleep over that. So uh, let's see. So we're going to take the uh, the result of this texture lookup and we're going to do something with it. Um, say cloud value equals that. All I'm going to really look at here is going to be instead of like the the full RB, RGBA uh, color value sampled from the cloud texture, I'm just going to look at the alpha. I don't really care that much about um about the color. Uh, so I can say um oh we can do something simple like if cloud value dot a equals equals zero point zero, then uh, color the RGB can times equals uh, 0 0.25 or 0 0.5, or I think I said it to 2.25 in the uh, in the 2D example. Um, again, you can you can play around with some more complicated math expressions for like working out the darkening factor uh, of these clouds. You can pass in the darkening factor as a uniform if you like. Um, we can uh, we can play around a little with that later. Firstly, I'm going to need to go and actually set these uniforms. So uh, one of them can be. And the, uh, the the time variable, and that should be all the uniforms we need to set to the shader uh, for uh, for just getting this off the ground. Okay, uh, that is definitely something projected down from the sky. Uh, that's a uh, it's a little darker than I thought it was going to be for one. Let me go and actually uh, set this to like 0.125. Actually, you know what? Um, Uh, I will I will set another uniform for the cloud darkening factor. Uh, just because doing that makes me feel good. So let's say u cloud darkening equals cloud darkening factor, and we can set this as another uniform. Um, what did I say? Point. Um, Actually, oh, you know what? It should it should be the other way, shouldn't it? If we're like a light a lighter blending factor in this case would be closer to one. All right. Uh, another thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to actually make sure that this texture repeats. Uh, so um, by default, textures in Game Maker won't like repeat, but you can you can set that texture setting. So texture set um, or is it GPU set text text repeat extended. Uh, the uh, the sampler ID can be whatever the uh, the sampler of the clouds is, and we can just set that to true. Uh, that is going to cause um, the cloud pattern on the ground to like to tile like this, which is uh, which is very nice. Okay, um, are these uh, are these actually being projected down onto the trees? They are. It's just not moving, so it's hard to tell. All right. So that was the other thing that I didn't do yet. Um, let's um, let's go into the fragment shader, and uh, we can simply add. Uh, U cloud time to the to the cloud UVs like this, and that's going to cause this to scroll. Uh, okay, uh, faster than much faster than it was in the uh, in the other game. Let's uh, let's dial that down a little bit. In fact, even if I don't multiply this by ten, I suspect it'll still be a little bit fast. All right, that's a, that's a very windy day. I'm currently recording this as Hurricane Helene is barreling towards the uh, Mid Atlantic United States and uh, to the. Uh, uh, the people in and around like North Carolina and Virginia, uh, maybe close your shutters and, uh, and and try to stay safe. Uh, let's divide that by 10 again. Alrighty then, that is much more reasonable. You can see the cloud shadows scrolling over the ground. You can see, um, like, you can see them scrolling over the tops of the trees. It does look a little bit weird when they scroll over like the, uh, like the very vertical sides of the trees. And there are ways you can, like, fudge these cloud shadows to make them look a little bit more friendly on the sides of, of um, trees and that sort of thing. Um, let me see. I think this is a... 
Let me uh, let me lighten the clouds a little bit more because I still seem a little bit dark. And I believe I'm also going to want to GPU set text uh, filter. Uh, GPU set text filter extended on the uh, on the cloud sampler, and that's gonna again fuzz, uh, fuzz the edges around the uh, uh, around these cloud samplers a little bit, and that will make them a little bit softer. Did I not? It doesn't look like it's doing it. Do I need to set this like before? Before I set the texture? That's really weird. Can't say I've ever had a problem with that before. Again, you could implement your own blurring on the um, on the cloud textures like this. That would involve a few more like looping up, um, like looping over nearby texels uh, in, when you sample from the cloud, uh, the cloud sampler, and then like averaging the values. Uh, you could also blur the um, blur the cloud sprite itself. Uh, for that matter, you could blur the cloud sprite ahead of time in like Photoshop or something like that, as long as you make sure that it continues to tile properly and uh, instead of checking if cloud value alpha is exactly zero, you could um, you could blend it based on the alpha. In fact, let me try that. Let me say um, color RGB equals mix from color RGB uh, to color RGB multiplied by that blending factor. The amount is going to be cloud value to alpha, uh, I think I'm going to want to say 1.0 minus cloud value to alpha, like that, and then we can get rid of that, um, that check there, um, is that going to, uh, is that going to firstly, okay, so that's going to more or less come out with the same thing, now it looks blurred, whereas it didn't before, oh, you know what, I know why it wasn't doing that, it was because I was, I was actually checking for exactly cloud value to alpha equals zero instead of, like, blending based on that, okay, um, in that case, maybe I won't, um, Maybe I won't uh, take the uh, the sprite into like Photoshop and blur, and blur it myself. All right, so that's um that's cloud shadows. Uh, this still looks a little bit like small, especially when you look off in the distance and you see the um you know the very tiled repeating pattern on those mountains off in the distance. Um, you could uh like scale up the clouds. Uh, we could take the cloud size and like multiply this by a factor of 10 um you could you could have the um you could just have this effect fade out at a distance so like you could have a certain cutoff or a certain distance from the camera we don't appear to be passing like the space di distance to this uh to this fragment shader from the vertex shader but you could you could have this fade out based on v space distance or something like that uh why are we scrolling so fast all of a sudden well, the, uh, the shadows are nice and big now, and I do think those look a little bit better on those distant mountains. Uh, you, you really get a feel for how big clouds are in, in real life, even though there's actually nothing up there and the sky is just a void. Anyway, I think we're going to end this off here. So my name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games. If you would like the code for this, look for the GitHub repository down in the description of this video. Uh, what did we do? Like this. Um, you should all go check out Wizard X in the Lost Hat, which is the game that... Uh, I'm I'm working on which uh, which inspired this video. Uh, link to the Steam page can be found down below. If you take this concept yourself and do anything fun or exciting or unusual with it, uh, feel free to like send me the, the the screenshots on like Twitter or whatever because I do get a kick out of seeing the different ways which people like spin off the the things that I show in these videos. I hope you all found this interesting, and I will see you all later. Special thanks to Zenjamin, Vitro V, Square Crow, Spy Die Games, Manta Ray, Game Maker, Edward Holt, and DJ Gibbles for supporting these videos. If you want to contribute to the channel, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.